So there are still things that we can do to the app, uh, styling, styling wise, changing uh, more fonts and sizes and colors and such. Um, that is uh, related to um, customizing it more to to what you want. Maybe some of this text is too small or the icons too small. This again comes in uh, looking at the uh, F12 uh, in the browser to figure out what is the actual element I need to style. So I'm not going to go into it too deep at the moment. Um, just to, I'll take a quick look, and if I don't get it at this point, I'll come back to it. But there is there is a that little bubble and such that you see. I think that's a font. Button show comics info. Okay, let me just let me just look right here. So BTN show comics info font size two uh, M just to be obvious. Uh, so the icon of that little speech bubble is is technically text. Uh, we're using a special character code to create the icon, but it's just text. So here we're saying, wherever there is an element uh, that has this class, btn show comics info, let me triple check the spelling on that. Wherever we have that, we're going to set the font larger. I'm choosing 2M at the moment. That might be too large. You'll have to test it yourself. Let me just confirm that that's the right class. BTN show comic. Yeah. So in the JavaScript, we had uh, we had a we had the cell where the icon was displaying. the The icon is a is, is still text, it's a font, and that cell has a class. So we're saying the size of any text inside of a cell with that name is going to be larger. BTN show comics info. In my case, comics info. So hopefully yours is also comics info. But here we're saying uh, style the icon in show comics screen. So there's a class there. Uh, I guess just to be more obvious, um, it could be uh, TD dot BTN show comics info, no space. So we're saying there's a cell with a class attached, so dot BTN show comics info. The font size of whatever's in that cell, make it 2M. And that should increase the size of the icon in in the table. So there's there's that change we can make. There's the changes of the um, the uh, the buttons in the in the input fields, and there's the changes of the input fields themselves. So. Let me just confirm that that's correct, and then we'll see about changing the sizes of, you know, the input fields or the fonts. That is the font of the input fields or the font of the buttons. That's just looking up the right um, CSS syntax. I don't have that memorized at the moment, but it's easy to look up. Let's just confirm here. View comics. Two M's. Okay, a little too big, but again, that's affecting those icons there if they're too small. So that was here. A cell with this class, change the font. OK, so my idea here then is uh, change the size or ch change the font of the uh, buttons.
Yes. Yeah, I believe the uh, text align center. Yeah, so we're saying anything in that cell align text. And it looks like an icon, but it's still text. So it should be text dash align center. Style the icon in the show icons screen. Okay, so for the button, um, we, we have a couple of different buttons, so we're gonna we're gonna write a definition that targets the different buttons. Uh, we have the um, let me see in the index HTML. Home screen options. Save comic. Okay, so uh, for example, just to look on the save comic screen, um, we have a submit button, a reset button, a generic button. We have three types of buttons. So we just need to look up the syntax to style C buttons in CSS. And we have of type button, of type reset, and type submit. Once we know that syntax, then we can style each of those buttons. So again, here is, you know, it looks like I have all of the code memorized, and I like to do that illusion, but I don't. I don't have all the code memorized, but I know how to look it up. So CSS to style a button, a submit button. And I'm sure there'll be a, a bunch of results. Let's see one example. OK, yeah, so that's easy. Our CSS code will be input with no dot or no pound or anything because it's not a class. It's an HTML tag. Remember, we wrote in the CSS a comment. Dot means it's a class. Pound means it's an ID. Nothing means it's a tag. So we have the input tag. Then we have to specify of type text, of type submit of type reset. So actually I'll grab this one. So in our CSS, if we want to keep using, well, let's, let's put it separately just to make it obvious. Uh, change the fonts of the buttons. So it's input, square brackets, that looks like an array, but it's not an array because it's um, in CSS, curly brace. So this is going to create CSS to target or to select. This is the CSS selector. We're selecting any tag named input of type submit. Well, that's exactly what we have in the HTML. We have an input tag with a type submit. I want to also apply what I'm about to write to inputs of type reset and inputs of type generic button. So that will be input of type submit, comma, don't forget that comma, input brackets of type reset, and comma inputs of type generic button. font family, uh, whatever fonts you chose. I, I have uh, Acme regular. Change the font of the buttons. So these commas are very important. Um, CSS is very, very obtuse in that, well, spaces mean something, commas mean something, and then over here we had a greater than symbol, which means something completely different than math. And then up here we had the tilde symbol, uh, wherever we had that, the tilde symbol, that means something else. Uh, those are the various ways to select something in CSS. They all have a meaning. So here we're saying let's target inputs of submit and, you can think of comma as and, sort of, and inputs of reset and inputs of type button. All of them have that font now.
Well, it's not a um, it's not a button. But what about those fields where someone types? In the HTML, how are those defined? Input of type text, comma, input of type text. So now all the buttons, the three different kinds of buttons, and the text field should have this. Now I think the final one over here is the special case. What about when we write the long note? What kind of tag is that? Text area. It's just the tag text area. It's different than the others. It's not an input field. No dot, no pound. It's not an ID. It's not a class. It's a tag. That's why up here we have, uh, up here we have h1, h2, h3. There are tags that exist h1, h2, h3. There are paragraphs, labels, and legends that exist. There are unique classes. Oh, there's the tilde there. I believe that means uh, siblings. And then we've got pounds, of course, which are IDs. But when there is no symbol, it's a tag, or it thinks it's a tag. And so here we've got all of these. Define all of these elements with this font. So let's check if that worked. And I, I probably knew that. I couldn't remember it. And it's already 8.53. I need uh, some Red Bull. So I couldn't quite remember. And uh, I did a quick look up. And then I reminded myself, oh, yes, it's that particular syntax. Uh, save comic. And there we go. So the input field has the new font. The buttons, uh, the buttons don't. So probably there's some other jQuery mobile stuff in the way that is conflicting. Um, let's see if we can figure it out a bit with the inspector. Maybe UI input BTN input. So right here, we're, this is our code. We're trying to apply it. Input type submit button with that font UI input BTN input maybe it's that let me play with it here font family Acme regular no So then I'm not quite getting it. Uh, so I do um, uh, style, or let's see, how can we write uh, jQuery mobile button CSS? Because now we've got jQuery mobile there. BTN markup. Change. CSS font. No, so you're saying what? UI dash BTN. Hmm, okay, that seems to be there. Thank you seems to be that it's just simply .ui-btn. So all of this other stuff about input type and all of that, uh, because we've got jQuery mobile, 
Um, this is being overridden by the jQuery mobile class UI button. So you know it just needed UI button. So maybe just to to do this. Um, We can we can do this. The only thing that matters is um, text area. No, we'll do it this way. Uh, the buttons, then the text area. Right, uh, actually, then we still need the uh, input type of text. So the one up here would be if we didn't have jQuery mobile, but we've got jQuery mobile, so uh, we're saying, okay, buttons that were created with jQuery mobile, put this font, and input fields of type text, and text areas, give them that font. And then I'll just leave the note up here. Um, if we wanted to do simpler, non uh, jQuery mobile styled buttons and such. So the buttons up on the navbar have been changed, and the input fields and all of that. So um, the fonts inside of the um, the table. Well, these are uh, cells in a table. We should perhaps, with the practice we've done so far. You should be able to figure it out via logic. There are cells in a table. So I won't do this one uh, right now. You can try that to figure that one out. But based on the, what we've done so far, it's not as complex as the other ones. There are cells in a table to style. I'll say that. Now, um, I'm going to shift gears from CSS in a moment, but general questions about the CSS we've done? Yes. I'll have to check you in the in the lab because it should work. Okay. I'll check you in a little bit. Yes. But when I do TD, end of type on, it works. Let me, let me go. TD, not TR? Let me take a quick look here. Just uh, uh, make sure you don't have spaces. TR colon, so no space there. Uh, you've got this first part, the ID space table, space. TR, but no space, and of type, and then no space between type and the um, parentheses. <laughs> if that doesn't quite get it, I'll check you in a moment. How far? No, but how far to where? <laughs> 